Tesla wants to build a bot, and Elon wants to go to Mars. The two are connected, but are they even possible? I'm Brian. Welcome to my Tesla weekend. So this goes out uh, on Fridays as a full version on my Tesla Live. And uh, maybe that's the version you're watching. You're watching whichever version it says on the screen, because it could also be the condensed version that goes out on my Tesla weekend over the weekend. Thank you to my newest patrons, Joseph and John, and upgrading patron, Patreon supporter, Parmod. Thank you, guys. Your support makes all this possible. My first impression when I heard about the bots was that it was a crazy idea. I don't know if you'll recall, but um, production hell was caused in large part due to Elon's insistence on uh, over-automation. He believed that bots could have the dexterity and problem-solving skills needed to do things like, um, like place insulation or run wires, but they simply do not. So can they handle the hardware? Can Tesla build the hardware? Well, if they can build cars, I would say they absolutely can build robots. Much easier. Much easier to do. Uh, but can they build the software? That's the tougher part. And the answer to that is Project DeJo, which will solve, you know, all those various woes. So, I don't know if you know this, but um, very well-funded groups have tried to make bots without much success. Now, I see these employees up here that look kind of unimpressed, kind of bored. That's because this is not a, a live demonstration. This is a supercut. This took all day, weeks. We don't know how long it took, but long enough that no one around is actually impressed. Because making robots do human-ish things is really difficult. And if you don't think so, here, watch some, watch some fun examples of robots doing human things. Ah, oh, they look like me trying to do it, but not uh, now. Now, not when I was young. It's difficult. And the missing element is Dojo. So why Tesla can succeed? They got the Dojo. So um, a lot of things are impossible. Or are impossible until they aren't. Full self-driving is impossible. Uh, but it's inching closer to reality. Uh, reusing boosters is was impossible until it wasn't and it was impossible for a long time now no one said it was very few people said it was actually impossible they said it was impossible to do so profitably for that matter digging a transit tunnel at 70 percent off is impossible they can do that starting a car company is impossible starting a space company is impossible many things are impossible human powered flight is impossible <clears throat> course it is. All these things are impossible. So the first thing is dexterity. Remember OpenAI? Elon co-founded it. He's no longer part of it. Uh, I believe uh, the rumor I heard was that he'd stepped back because there was um, a conflict of interest between his autonomous vision with Tesla and this. Look at that dexterity. So dexterity and grip strength appear, if not solved, solvable. So let's talk about the value of self-driving. <clears throat> it's unimaginable. Obvious things, there's shipping, there's Uber type operations, there's getting to work and going to your daughter's dance recital. All of those things, hey, hey somebody else's channel said to do it. Yeah, do that. But those are just scraping the surface. But the big thing is, have you ever wondered uh, why Tesla doesn't use these to park in the lot? Why don't we use FSD to park in the lot? A Nissan at one point was rumored to be using something like that in uh, Japan to move them from the factory just down the driveway to the loading area. I don't know if that's true, but it seems solvable. So realistically, the cars could drive themselves to the port, 
drive themselves onto the ship, and then all you'd need is a bunch of humans to strap them down. Do you actually need humans to strap them down? Because the bots can do it, and they can make a video of it to verify it's been done. It can go back through the system as needed. It can all be validated and verified. There's no reason the cars can't go from the factory door all the way to your front door with no human intervention. But again, <clears throat> we're still thinking small. So if it's got the dexterity and the grip and the flexible problem-solving skills, you know what that means? That means they can perform repairs on themselves. How wild would that be? And the short answer is pretty wild. <clears throat> yeah. So the same way FSD can replace every job that requires human hands on a wheel, Tesla bot can replace nearly every job that requires hands or feet. Put a bot in every hundredth Tesla semi, and now you've got uh, on, on a given route, and now you've got a mechanic no less than 90 minutes away at any given time. You need a house cleaned, or repaired, or built? Go for it. Why can't a Gigafactory 10 years from now be built, at least in part, by Tesla bots? But we're still thinking small. What about deep sea welders, or explorers, or independent problem solving, uh, where independent problem solving abilities are critical? Maybe we're still thinking too small. You know, do you, need a, do you need a construction crew for a habitat on another planet? Now we're getting up to Elon speed. So why don't we take a break from that, let me see what this is, and do some math. You guys know I love my math, right? What is FSD worth? A hundred grand? Elon seems to think it might be. I disagree. I think it's worth less than that. I think it will be commoditized at some point. So, um, well, you could get yourself a part-time driver. That'd be 10000 a year. Or a real chauffeur. That'd be 30000 a year. Semi-truck driver, 30, 40, who knows, 50000 a year. Depends on the route. Depends on a lot of factors. So what kind of money are we talking about here? Well, as of today, there's about 2 million units available to get FSD. And the current take rate's only about 10%. So, of course, that means 1.8 million still available. So the total addressable market, just for the vehicles already on the road, at 12,000 would be $21 billion. <clears throat> yeah, there could be a $21 billion flip the switch moment with Do when Dojo cracks level five, which, you know, <clears throat> from the people uh, using it, they feel confident that's a thing that can happen. And what about at 15,000? Well, 27 billion. So, well, not everyone's going to take it. No, but the money's there. And so if someone comes to you and offers you 20, 30,000 over what you paid just so they can get yours to enable full self-driving, a lot of, lot of buyers might uh, take that. Well, you know, we might just, well, what about the subscription? Subscription's good. $360 million a month. $27 billion. Well, uh, at a 10 times uh, earnings multiple, that'd be a quarter trillion dollars a year in value. And considering you add, uh, you keep increasing production, production will hit $2 million, not this year, probably next year, and continue climbing from there. That could be 27 to 50 to 100 billion a year in FSD revenue. It doesn't take much more than the 10 times multiple, something like a 20 times multiple, to get to a trillion dollars in value just in FSD. So there's only two potential dooming factors I see. One is that Dojo doesn't solve the problem, or that somehow it's genuinely unsolvable. I believe it can. It's a matter of time, and that FSD remains, you know, let me get back over to here. Right now, uh, the bot, solving for the bot is not the big deal. Uh, right now, it's all hams on deck, and we've got to solve that.
but bots can do kind of anything. The other potential dooming factor is the price, or rather, the value of the bot. So, for a million dollars, you can get a bot that can dance. Sometimes. Pretty well, I guess. That's not a great value to me. There's no market for million dollar dancing robots that I'm aware of. But they do have the little dogs. SpaceX even has one. And at 50,000, they're able to sell them. I think a humanoid robot with human type of problem solving skills would be worth more than that. But how much more? 20 hours a day times five years. That's 36,250 hours. With a guest a cost, which is a very scientific term, say 100 grand, that puts the cost of your bot at $2.74 an hour. Do you think people will buy that? Does 100,000 sound too high? So what is the addressable market? Well, I would argue it's at least 60 million. It's tens of millions for sure. It's potentially hundreds of millions. It just kind of depends. So let's say we build a factory or series of factories that can output a million a month. And a five-year life cycle that just keeps a 60 million churn. And why do I think you can sell a million? Because there are that many use cases and they will always be there. And 100,000, you can build it for that price, absolutely. Especially at scale. Boston Dynamics is hand building theirs and selling it for 50,000. The hardware will keep getting cheaper. It's like a first generation console. They put the overpowered chips in it, knowing that next year they'll make a profit. And this would be kind of the same. So let's say in the early days, they're only making 50,000 a unit. For a profit a month of $50 billion a month. $600 billion a year. This is, uh, what's the name of that company uh, from Alien? Wahiti, whatever it is. That's that kind of money. So let's say the price drops to 50000 and they're only making twenty grand. That's still $20 billion a month. That's still a quarter trillion dollars a year in profit. Four times earning multiple gets you to a trillion dollars of extra valuation. So the one thing I wanted to address is the problem with humans losing their jobs. This guy can do jobs. He's all about jobs. So humans can do a variety of things. And there was a, a, a real fear not long ago that soon there would not be enough work left for humans. We now know from the past two years that that is not quite true, not yet. But that day can come, especially with full self-driving across a variety of vehicles, because driving is the number one profession in the United States, and it could soon be gone. But all jobs could soon be gone. So what do we do? What I think we do is a works program. Arts, poetry, anything. Hire people who want to build birdhouses for senior citizens. Why not? And how do we pay them? Each bot does how many hours a year, did we say? 7,300 hours a year. So let's say we assign some amount of a, of, of a grant that goes out from the owner of that bot into this, into this pool of money for those people. It's a dollar an hour. So your grant per year ends up being 7300 or $2.37 per hour. Why don't we put it on full self-driving as well? Something like a nickel a mile. And I know, it's not cool. Maybe we just do it on commercial trips. Long haul. You know, Ubers. Robo-taxis. Miles a year, even if it's 12,000, is still 600 bucks. If you look at the number of miles driven in the US, it's in the billions. 
So that would generate just these programs alone, hundreds of millions, if not tens of billions that could be used to give people an income to do things that they have always wanted to do, but for whatever reason could not afford to because they had to work a job. Wouldn't it be great if that small channel that teaches guitar on YouTube was actually getting paid? I think it'd be amazing. So if it works, they can easily sell a million a month in perpetuity with 600 billion a year in profit. So forget cars, forget batteries, forget solar. If this was spun off into its own whole thing, would you invest? How heavy would you go? I would go heavy. Myself, I would go heavy. But I have the luxury of having done all right with Tesla so far. So I guess that gives me an advantage and a little bit of comfort. And also it's in my retirement account, so I can't touch it either way. So let's get into the Q&A, shall we? Ask your questions. I'll be digging in to the comments. We got 10 minutes left to cover it all, but let me thank my patrons who get early access, bonus content, and ad-free experience and help keep the channel running. Thanks to Jeff, who recently upgraded. Thanks. Well, that is the end of the condensed version. If you want to see the full version from now on, you can uh, head over to the second channel, My Tesla Live, or follow the link in the description to see that, the chat, the chat replay, the longer Q&A, all that good stuff. So what did I miss or misunderstand? Leave it in the comments below. And as always, my friends, stay tuned, uh, stay juicy, and I can't wait to hear from you clever robots on the flippity-flop.